The thing is, um, the moderator of this section is unfortunately in the hospital, so I'm substituting him. Um, we're now talking about device manufacturers, and uh, we will go a little bit um, different from anything else. So how you used to see this is um, HTC coming on stage and saying we're the best in uh, Windows Phone 7 and we're the best in Android and we're seeing that amount of devices and this amount of devices. And then uh, there will be, I don't know, Huawei coming in and saying and we're entering Russian market. So we do a little bit the other thing. For me it's really important for you, like how many people are developers here? They're pretty big. Okay, so it's good. Right now we'll do the following. We will teach you a little bit how the device manufacturers think from the inside. Because, um, I don't know if you know, so before um, my, my current part of life, before I was for the six years a part of SPV software, and lately I was a part of Yandex, um, one of my roles was to communicate with device manufacturers. Um, actually convincing them that um, they are worth, like, we are worth trying. So you should pre-install us, or you should work with us as a software vendor. So how you actually do this, how you actually um, understand the thinking of device manufacturers, we'll talk about this, and also how device manufacturers talk to you and want you to approach them. So <clears throat> um, on stage right now, there are three people already here. Unfortunately, the first person is missing. I hope he will come. At least. So uh, there are two people from uh, BlackBerry, Ola and Andre. So please join me. Um, both of them are talking a lot about different topics. So Ola, for example, is in charge not only of Russia but also the uh, northern part of Europe. <laughs> and um, Andre um, will also talk a lot about Russian approach and how you can actually bring your services to Russian markets. And then there is uh, Mit Grilovsky, who is a part of Yota Devices. This is one of my, you know, this is not a standard approach. So this is, that is not a standard thing. So I think you've never heard about part of Yota, which is, or you heard about part of Yota, which is Yota Devices. So this guy is doing actually all R&D for Yota, for modems, mobile devices, um, this kind of things. Doing that creative in... Uh, approaching also the market in the right way, not only it's like, yeah, this is the hardware, we take the hardware, we put the software, so this kind of thing. Um, I think you have, you have there, you have Andre? Maybe you have next to you. Um, so maybe first we'll um, talk a little bit, because I, I promised them that you can show us the mobile device market, so maybe meet you as a person who actually develops devices. You can um, explain us a little bit how the device building process is looking. Um, I don't know, probably is like the question to my colleagues from BlackBerry because they're a big company, but uh, let's say, because Seattle is acting as a, let's say, software startup in a device market. Uh, we're actually trying to bring uh, a startup model to devices. We don't have uh, in-house engineers like crazy people with antennas and uh, so we rely on to partners. Uh, what we do, we have actually a very small product and project management team and uh, trying to make all the de de decisions last, let's say, not like for years long. And this is our advantage. We are just bringing uh, new experience and managing our partners to deliver all other things like manufacturing, engineering, and so on. But let's say from customer perspective, we are like devices company as well. <laughs> What's the most important in device when you build it? Is it the hardware you build or is it the software you build? It's uh, not about both of it's just experience. Probably. Uh, I will not announce any devices we are working on now, but uh, probably some of you know the, uh, let's say, hotspot we made, like Yota Mini, and um, what we did actually, we just trying to remove all the, let's say, stoppers. We, we, our device doesn't require any drivers for like any operating system if you just plug in with a USB. 
It uh, has uh, just a very natural like interface for sharing internet. So if you just come to like cafe with your friends, and you don't need like to say the password. You just make a switch, and internet will make will, will become available for anybody. So we're, we're just fo focusing on those kind of like experience things. But what you, for example, learned from device manufacturing, like I like your approach. We talked before um, when you said I actually know which iPad is going to be released. So we talked like a week ago, yeah. yeah. And me tell me I know which iPad going to be released because I know which parts of devices in the market are missing. You know, this is the, the really important thing to understand for me. Like, what other things did you learn out of the device manufacturing process, like this? Uh. You know, that's probably a tricky question because uh, there are a lot of uh, trends and uh, if you need to understand what will happen in a market like next year or like the year after next and uh, you just need to take a look of like uh, things uh, you, you, you just wanted to remove from devices. So if you're a thing, so if, because uh, we just need to like Take a look for natural things. Let's say picture. If you see the pixels on your screen, that's unnatural thing. So it, it, it should be removed. So that's, that means like companies like Apple, who are focusing on uh, customer experience and emotions, they will remove unnatural things from devices. So that's why I can say like I can predict some. Just an example. Probably, and we'll take a look next year. So, we will appear in the iPhone 5 or so. Just take a look how you just turn on your mobile phone. You always press like power button or like slide the um, screen, something like that. But that's our nature. There are a lot of sensors who can just uh, determine that you are holding the device in hand and you just want to use it. You can do do this like right now and probably Apple will make an announcement this summer saying oh we are first who just remove the power button because now we can just determine that you're holding your device in hand that's like the biggest innovations ever and uh, they like spring on a, on a <laughs> but let's let's jump to the device manufacturers yeah. actually so Olaf for example for you um, do you like a lot of um, I think what a lot of software um, developers don't understand that actually when they come to user acquisition the device manufacturer is a big source of user acquisition for them so do you feel the same way or uh, yeah uh, first of all i just wanted to kind of come sure. back to, to what you were talking about and, and basically uh, when, it, when you were discussing importance of hardware and software I think I think the main issue there is actually to have they're actually equally important in the sense that if the hardware and software is not working properly together then then you're actually up for a, a big challenge and, and today we're seeing a quite a big shift in that perspective because uh, in the market today uh, there are very few uh, device manufacturers that are actually still doing their own uh, OS so you have Android, for example, that is more or less all major device manufacturers are using, uh, basically except for BlackBerry and, and, and iPhone uh, and Apple. So, so in that perspective, the control of the whole device chain from the actual whatever chipsets you have in the bottom, the whole way up through the OS and the application layers and so forth, there's a big, big transition in the market because so many of these device manufacturers are actually dependent on a, another source, Google in this perspective, to de deliver the whole main operating system for the whole device. And over time, that it, this could of course be a benefit because you see that they're, just like with uh, Microsoft, it, all PCs are using the Windows operating system, but it still, it also kind of limits the, the amount of control you have of the whole device chain and how the whole all the different components of the device is going to work properly together. So that is at least one of the reasons that we decided to keep with our own system. And I know, for example, like Samsung are still pushing their Vada platform to, to make that happen. And because 
re letting everything rely on an external source might be a, a, a jeopardizing their control of the device. Uh, the, the other thing I would like to say is also the fact that uh, today there's also a major shift into the user experience and how the UI is being uh, perceived as a very, very critical component. Five years back, the, the, no one really understood how much the user experience today would actually define the quality of the device and how the different components within the device were actually working properly together. So I think that that is something that you, you need. And you're actually helping the developers coming to BlackBerry with this. So yeah. to make the fit of the hardware and software work. Yeah. Exactly. So, so by, by, by doing these kind of uh, events like this one, speaking at various conferences, I was at Mobile Fest uh, uh, last fall, for example. Th this is a way of communicating the important, which part of the device process should be of, in focus for the developer, because uh, as I said, the, the, traditionally there has been a very strong, yes, when you were doing the Java games and so forth, these applications were more or less working as uh, standalone apps very much. Today we want a much more seamless user experience across the device, uh, across the different applications in the phone. So you basically want the, to have four or five different apps working seamlessly and running at the same time. They should all, and you should be easily could jump back and forth between the different applications. And another thing that is very critical today to be successful is how you move down and make use of the core native capabilities in the device. Like you have the GPS, the positioning parts, uh, you have the, the the, the billing and the network infrastructure, the communications uh, and the, the clock and calendars, all these functions that are normally the native capabilities, how they, these are integrated into the, to the overall uh, application experience. Mm -hmm. I see. I wanted to ask Andre, like, um, in terms of Russia, for example, yeah, I saw a lot of differences between Europe and Russia in terms of consuming devices. So for example, yeah, you know, there are numbers that in Russia, the um, life cycle of the device is decreasing a lot. Like it was 18 months before, now it's 12 months. The smartphone are changing like every every year. And um, there is a big pressure here as a device manufacturer. But on the other hand, um, we don't have subsidized devices. This is a big thing. So what? Um, how does it affect actually device manufacturer business in that case? So these two approaches that there is a pressure of the market, but there are no way to actually distribute good devices for the uh, mobile operator. Uh, <coughs> thanks. <coughs> First of all, um, um, the way um, device, uh, mobile devices are used in Russia is very different than in, in Western Europe. And it's very, you can see it immediately as, uh, as soon as you go to the metro and you see people reading from all kinds of mobile devices from Palm Pilots, uh, uh, from um, QTEC, uh, older devices, and from newer devices, from e-readers. So this is really amazing how, um, how I inventive people are and how are they willing to embrace new technology. And maybe that's why the life cycle of the devices is decreasing. Because uh, even though Russia is not uh, uh, so much, uh, so high penetration on mobile devices, like some particular devices, like prestige devices like iPhones are very high in Moscow in particular. But uh, overall, on the country-wise, it's not that high, but people who, who use that, they know exactly how to use them. And they're very demanding in terms of features, in terms of new services. And um, about the subsidy, uh, in Russia, for example, in the UK, you know, uh, in, or in America, you can go uh, and get a new iPhone Zero, uh, not paying anything, and uh, all you need to do is to, to sign a contract for two years of uh, service, and you pay uh, $50 for, for service, but you don't pay for the device. And this is very easy for the consumers, for the customers, but in Russia it's not like that. And I think part of it is because of uh, carriers, the way that they do it, and some economics uh, of it, but that's uh, the reality. Uh, and of course that puts uh, additional uh, pressure on uh, on device manufacturers um, and um, 
what we are seeing uh, is uh, still what we see in Moscow, for example, the devices are expensive, top of the um, top of the of the team are uh, popular, which I think it's not it's not typical of it's not representative of Russia, the whole Russia. Um, for example, in um, outside of big cities, I don't think people even using smartphones that that much. And they're only beginning to to understand what it is. And I think the big uh, uh, the big opportunity for for you as uh, developers is to really understand and what will be the next the next wave, the next interesting, the next interest that people will want. Not now, not today in Moscow, but next year, two years from now, in all over the country. And that's a that's a secret of uh, how um, the. Um, how the thinkers, how the um, innovators, the way they think, they predict what's going to happen. And you, of course, you, uh, you've seen many things, you bombarded with many new technologies and products. Mobile World Congress uh, that just finished, you probably there were dozens of uh, the new devices, bigger, better, and more megapixels, and so, forth, so on. But what do you need? 41 megapixels? Uh, 41, it's crazy. But you really need to understand what's better: 41 megapixel on a smartphone or 15 megapixel on a uh, Nikon or Canon camera. Of course, it's it's all marketing games. Yeah, when talking to about device sports, I also like this approach of device manufacturers. So it's from my own experience. Yeah, when you come to device manufacturers and say, "We have user interface for you." And they say, cool, how much does it cost? Is it free? And I'm like, no, you know, we have development team and they need to, to be feeded. So you need actually to pay for the software. Um, so my experience was that a lot of decision making inside device manufacturing is made because of the price of the components they put in. So um, the, how much the screen is, how much the connectors are. And my experience was a lot. I learned a lot in terms of how much this particular um, headphone plug costs. Actually, influences the end price of the software I'm selling to them. Do you feel that BlackBerry does it's the same, or um, it's somehow different? Uh, I, I would say it's very much the same for for most device manufacturers. The 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 fact that you all the time need to increase. Uh, the value of the overall device by incorporating new OLED type uh, megapixel cameras, OLED type screens and so forth. There is of course a tremendous cost I involved in putting so much uh, hardware components into the device. Uh, uh, and, but, and the fact that we're doing that is of course uh, one of the, so to speak, easiest part to start negotiating around is then the, the software side, uh, looking at the, how much you should charge for the, the pre-installed application. The software is actually the box. Is yeah, the it, yeah, but uh, because you, you end up in a situation, okay, because you know it's it's only a code structure, and it, but but as I've been actually working on both sides, uh, I've been working for numerous of smaller companies before this one, uh, building applications. I know that there is a tremendous amount of effort and time built into each of these applications anyhow. So the, the, uh, my advice to you all guys is to, to be persistent in, in knowing the value of what you have actually created. Because if the device manufacturer said, yeah, but we, we, we can do this and this together and you will get so much marketing credit for this, this, of course, we, as a big big company, we can give you a, a lot of marketing and PR. We can do joint, joint marketing of your applications worldwide and globally. That, that's, of course, true. But you, it is important that you know the value of, 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 your, uh, of your own creation. And especially in Russia, there is so much unique power in terms of creativity uh, in, in application building. I, I've seen that on, during a number of years. So. Be proud of that uh, and be persistent in making sure that you get the value for what you have created. Even if, but it, it, it would always come down to a discussion should this cost a, a euro per, per device to be in, installed or should it be a half a euro or so forth. All of that needs to be calculated based on the, what you also see as a predicted volume for the, for the future. Uh, yeah, but um, if we come to the devices parts, so you say. Uh, 
we need better screens, we need better cameras. But um, I think it's more to me or to you as well the question, do users need this? Because when you see the market and you see Verto devices or any devices done by Mode Labs, which are actually, actually the cheapest chipset you can get on the market, like MediaTek maybe or something, and then you put the cheapest screen and some kind of the UI and you sell it for 5,000 US dollars and people buying it. So actually, do people or users or clients you sell to need these devices uh, in terms of creativity, innovation, and the best screen ever? Well, well I, could, uh, I, I could start it and you can continue, <laughs> but it, it, it is quite funny, of course, because I, uh, if you look at, for example, the camera now with all these megapixels, uh, it, is a, it is a human fact that a, a, above 16 megapixels is very hard for, for, the, for the eye to actually make any difference. So if a camera has 12 megapixels or 16 megapixels, it doesn't really matter in the end. However, when I saw this uh, 31 megapixel or 41 whatever, uh, I saw that uh, at the MWC. Well, I, I couldn't really tell the difference between that one and the 16 megapixel, but on the other hand, we took a snapshot of a bridge with a person standing on a bridge very far in the distance. And using the, the zoom technique, you could actually zoom in all the way down so I could actually see the color of his shoes, which was basically impossible <laughs> if you have to look at the original photo. So if you, have, if you actually have that kind of need to zoom in as, that is far... Is the mass market like... Is there a need in the mass market for this? No, of course, of course. You, we in 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 the many instances we're actually we all jointly create a need. Mm -hmm. We we create the demand. Uh, so <coughs> on the other, but if we don't create it, then then we wouldn't probably have some of those techniques that are up up and coming now, like NFC and so forth. The, the, so it's, it is it is a position where we actually are moving towards creating needs, but on the end in the end. Many of those things that we have today we, that we take for granted we wouldn't be here if we didn't create it from the beginning. Me? What do you think? You know, it's uh, probably a um, tricky question because. It uh, is. Yeah. yeah it's when when we're talking question. about creating you know, any kind of product like software, hardware, this should be, this, uh, like, uh, let's say, um, a lot of, sub, sub, uh, let's say, subjective things and uh, if, we're t if you're talking about let's say painting nobody can say how big it should be it can be like 10 centimeters big it can be like 10 meters big this what you just wanted to create the same with the, with the devices if you just uh, feel uh, how the device should look like and what the proposition and the value is after this you can just select the components and if you don't feel you'll create with, let's say, Samsung Galaxy Note, like with a big screen, four calls, and something like this. But you use it. I saw you use it. Actually. Yeah, I, I'm using all kinds of, I have probably tens of phones in my back, but uh, that's actually, if people are just, like, have an understanding what they're creating, they create the something, like, very natural, and uh, they don't care about uh, megapixels and screens that's like a part of the device and I'll just say probably small technical comment about let's say these 41 megapixels yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. probably like two minutes uh, do you know actually how the camera actually works so each pixel they have actually color filter that means let's say if you have 8 megapixel camera, actually you have, let's say, only 8 divided by 3, so around 3 megapixels, natural megapixels of image. And uh, that's actually how marketing works in Nokia. They created very beautiful, natural 8 megapixel camera with uh, like 3 sub-pixels for each pixel, like for like colors. And marketing says, okay, we have actually 30 something, uh, 32 megapixels. So then let's say, just say about this. So this is just marketing bullshit. So it's very beautiful 8 megapixel camera, 41. <laughs> um, we were talking about like, the note. Um, maybe it's a question to Andre. Do you see that um, tablets are actually used 
in um, in Russia a lot because honestly I saw a um, number of iPads, I saw a lot of users whom I asked to use an iPad and I was saying, yeah, kind of reading books, you know. Um, are there any other user um, cases for tablets you see really on this market? Because you also know, mentioned the books, anything else? Uh, what I see the most being used in Russia in, uh, in terms of tablets is uh, e-readers. People read uh, books, and which is uh, which is beautiful because people always been reading books in Russia more than in, in Western Europe and in America, and now they're doing it with uh, with electronic, with tablets, with e-readers. And I think here could be one of the killer applications, next killer application that you could create something that would uh, universal e-book reader for. For different uh, yeah, the topics. Book, Bookmate is trying to do this, I think. Yeah, the Russian company based in Moscow. Yeah, something like this. Or maybe for the next, for the for the uh, another tablets. Another case studies for tablets is a big discussion now going on in America is uh, whether you how much you should charge for the electronic book. They saying that um, today you can buy an electronic book from Amazon for I think ten dollars which is one third of uh, price of, of paper book. But uh, Apple now is uh, bringing the new partner structure and saying uh, you should charge and immediately the prices are growing by 30, 40%. And here's a question, how much should you charge for the electronic book? Is it, what's a fair price? One third of a paper book or maybe it should be more? And here's a, here's a dilemma and here, it goes back to your question about uh, the, the price of software, mm -hmm. the value of software. Of course, it's so to you as the developers to question, do, we, do I develop for the greatest, latest um, camera, um, smartphone with a great camera, or do I develop for another, uh, another platform which is not as uh, flashy, but maybe it has more better segmentation or better better features. Of course, it's a question, it's a matter of tactics and a strategy of you as a developer company, who do you develop for? Android, for example, is, uh, we see it everywhere now, but we also see the big fragmentation. We have different versions, we have different um, smartphones that don't work. So you invested some time and money, your resources, you create application for Android, and suddenly it doesn't work in the next version, right? In next version of software, even uh, next version of smartphone. So of course you need to be smart in order to understand the way it goes. And and th this is a this is a secret of you as a, in order to become successful, you need to really understand these trends and what the future will bring. I just want to make comment. Uh, another, of course, very booming area for tablets is gaming. Uh, yeah, I think just the tablets are really underestimated. Like, there are not many developers who say, yes, we do the mobile smartphone version and a tablet version. So, the gaming industry is a great example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can just speak from my, our own experience. Since, since the move into a, a strong gaming uh, strategy, the, the, the amount of, of games that are downloaded through tablets is, is growing by hundreds and hundreds of percent. It's, it's, a, it's a really a truly booming mass market of doing gaming and I think one of the also different things that are happening now is that the tablets are actually changing in size. They, they, they are, we're so used to the iPad 10 inch format but now we're seeing tablets in the 7 inch format, in the widescreen format and, and so forth with different resolutions and so, so on. And we, I can, we, you can very easily anticipate. So the you, fragmentation coming there as well. <laughs> of course, it, it of course it does, but it also allows for the creativity of doing maybe games that are uh, or tablets that are more uh, user friendly from a gaming perspective, you know, for you know, two funds controls and so forth. That, that that is areas where I see that the tablets are, are doing a, a, a good job in, in exchanging mm -hmm. that. You want to say something? I yeah, just want to add uh, that probably also should look at for like two examples. One is a let's say bookmate for ebook already. So they don't concentrate on uh, apps. They like uh, bring like web app, web uh, app 
for all, all, all of the devices, like iPads, iPhones, and uh, future phones as well. And uh, the second thing is probably about gaming, it's uh, on, on live. If you just uh, take a look on online.com, it's like gaming, but it's, let's say, cloud gaming. So the games are rendered in the cloud and displayed on the device. That's actually a good way of thinking. And uh, the third thing I just want to say that, like, this year, like, it's not a prediction that this probably also already effect. That uh, this year, one billion of uh, HTML5 enabled phones will be sold. So if you if we're talking about people like in rural areas of Russia, probably HTML5 is a very natural way to uh, to like bring the uh, the experience of your services and apps to them. Yeah, that's like HTML. HTML5 is a completely different topic. So um, I think we'll close a little bit of the discussion, but we'll give you the opportunity to ask questions. Yeah, raise your hand. I will. I will repeat your question then. Okay. So, hello. Um, what do you think of the future of feature phones? You are talking about smartphones, but there are also feature phones, and the market is large for them. And do you think they will become, well, disappear, or they will be alongside the smartphones? <coughs> um, should I repeat? The question was, what's the future of feature phones actually? Because yeah, you're right. Like India, for example, you take India, and there are feature phones everywhere. Um, what's the future? Well, uh, I agree. So it's a very good question. Uh, I've actually spent some time figuring that out myself. And uh, uh, <clears throat> if you if you look at BlackBerry's company, we don't do any uh, feature phones. Uh, so, but uh, what what you can say in general is that I I don't think we've actually seen the end of feature phones uh, just yet. Uh, and. There is still actually uh, some interesting things going on in that space in terms of adding features for, for those segments. Uh, uh, because it's a, there is still a, a fairly large population in the world that have, for example, limited uh, access to, to broadband services. Uh, so if you, for example, if you look at the, the streaming music uh, area where, where a lot of, which is very bandwidth consumption, so, Today we, we can see innovation taking place. I, I met with a company, for example, called Popcatcher, uh, uh, which are doing a solution that allows you to drag MP3 songs from radio stations in low bandwidth areas. So during nighttime, they can use their feature phones and put them to actually start downloading songs from radio stations and store it on them uh, as MP3s on their devices. And that, 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 that is a pretty cool thing to, to actually get hold of that kind of content, uh, even that. So, so I think another aspect of us is also that we haven't really seen... Uh, one, one problem that we've had during the past years is that more or less all devices now that are shipped, the smartphones are looking, yes to, uh, are looking the same. They, they all have a big... The big black full, box. Yeah. yeah, a big black box with a full touch screen. And, I still think there is room for for diversity. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we st uh, soon we'll see the reappearance of the uh, fold up fold up phones again, or even fold up a lid if, with a QWERTY. I don't, I'm not sure even that the the, the 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 I still think there is a need for QWERTY physical keyboards in some regions and some situations. Uh, so so I wouldn't be surprised if we actually can see the the future of feature phones for a, at least a couple of years more, but. Of course, as with all technology shift, also even if the, there will also be a, a point when it's going to be hard to say tell what, what is actually the difference. The, the, normally, what you, when you talk about feature phones, you you see that it's it's basically having problems with uh, it's very much of a fixed environment. You can't actually do so much more with it. All the applications are basically in there from scratch, but. The more, also though, there you will see a, a trend of getting more power into them, better batteries and better chipsets. So it is a trend transition, and uh, I think the most advanced feature response today would soon be qualified as, as low-end smartphones. Yeah, and Amit, I know you, you use actually feature phones. So what do you think is the future of feature phones? Um, I just propose to like think not about devices, because I don't see, let's say, huge difference 
from now between uh, like let's say features wants to be the Java and uh, smartphones in terms of like services, but think just about user scenarios. And currently the trend is that uh, now we're using our like let's say phones more for like data access, not. I mean, data access like reading and uh, chatting emails and so on, not, for, not only for voice. This is a huge trend, and probably I'll tell you more on the session for the Internet of the Things what will happen. Yeah, and another talk about devices. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw the question from there. Um, is um, what are you thinking about the size uh, development in the future? Because if you look at the Android phones, uh, the size is getting better, uh, bigger and bigger uh, every time since the last two years. So will we carry like tablets in our pockets in, uh, in the next years, or will the phones get sm uh, smaller again? Um, so you mean you, you mean the hardware, how yeah. big the hardware will be? Yeah. Uh, actually, my personal uh, things are that. It, like in ten years ago, we have a brain, brain implant, and uh, <laughs> you know that's. You can what, talk about like that's yeah. with James, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's actually what I believe, and uh, the biggest move from from my perspective is this video glasses. Now we see video glasses from like Carl Zeiss and uh, Sony, and uh, they all became slicker in the years, and uh, probably they will replace. I hope so. They will replace big, big screens, so that's what we will see. And uh, now, actually, I'll just tell you the story why we see the, 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 the bunch of the devices. Because Samsung suddenly found a niche with the Samsung Galaxy Note, and they just trying to like to make uh, one device per inch, <laughs> trying to find the like niche for them. It's okay. But if you look at Nokia, it's the same. You know, like Mobile World Congress, you saw Nokia with um, Nokia um, 900, yeah. which was a little bit bigger than 800, just in terms of the hardware. Uh, I, I can ask that to that. I think, in, in principle, it's, it would be very good if all phones would have the same size as their iPhone. So, because for, as an app developer, you would only then have one uh, size to develop towards. All the games or applications you were developing would actually then be, you, you would know that they would fit the screen, they would uh, perform as, as, as that was uh, intended. However, on the other side, there, there are things that would, it would also be a, a, a kind of a bottleneck for future innovation. Because if you, if you only have one form factor and one OS to always develop towards, then, then you end up losing some of that creativity. For example, it was just one year ago that uh, there was a, a big drive that we should have like folded screens. So you have like, a, if you take the form factor of a traditional iOS device, but then you can actually fold it together as a, pocket, as a pocket, and then if you fold them up, you would actually get two double screens. And that, 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 that is, you might think, okay, why, why do I need double screens then? But, what, what, what was then one of the key things that you could actually do, then you could use the top screen as, as, a, as a zoomed in menu, like, like Nintendo DS for example. So you would use the top screen to zoom in, maybe having your email client on the top screen, and then you would have something different, maybe a maps or a, maybe a game running on the, on the lower screen. Or you can actually have them interact between each other. Uh, and and I, th I think that that is something that is is the benefit of of the fact that we're actually getting size, different sizes of the screens is that we're we're pushing the envelope, we're pushing our creativity to what you can do with different types of screen formats and screen sizes. So I think we will continue experimenting with with big screens, small screens. Of course, there will always be some kind of uh, human. Uh, preferred uh, way of handling it so you can have it in your jacket or pocket or the size between the, the, the microphones and so forth. But in general, I think it's good from an app application developer's perspective to be, have that creativity with using different formats. We'll take another question from there. So, yeah. Can I comment uh, on, on this oh, one? Sorry. So sorry. Speaking of uh, different screen sizes, um, first of all, uh, we are still in the beginning of a mobile revolution. Even though it started maybe four or five years ago, we're still in the very beginning. And that's why we've seen very new, uh, different looking devices, sizes, and so on. And this is great that we're having different sizes. But uh, 
in some cases, we need to really understand the big screen on a smartphone, like five inch Galaxy Note, is uh, possibly it's a statement from a manufacturer saying, I can do that, and let's see what, let's see what market says. But honestly, I don't think you will, uh, it's very convenient to carry on as, 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 a, tele, as a phone. So, uh, but at the same time, maybe it will be very, very, um, very uh, popular in a certain niche. But I don't think it's going to be mainstream. Just like 41 megapixels is not going to be mainstream. But it's an experiment. It's very interesting to see what's going on. Uh, but because we are at the beginning of this revolution, it will. Um, thing will change a lot. Maybe some of them are still uh, ahead of the time, like Newton was when it came out 10 years before it, tablets became the mainstream. But uh, um, probably I want to have as a telephone something that will fit in my pocket with a big enough screen, uh, real estate, to be able to browse and see, but not too big. Uh, at the same time, there will be tablets. I think there will be a category of tablets, which will probably not completely replace the PC, but they will, they will come close. So just like cars, you have, a, you have a trucks for to carry the, uh, the materials, and you have out, um, buses, and you have uh, cars for the people. The same will be with, uh, with mobile phones. But of course, it makes your life difficult because you need to develop all different screen sizes. You need to really understand: do I need to focus on that or that? But it also opens um, opens a, you, uh, opens the opportunity to your intuition and your creativity and your kind of prediction. So it's really fun. Yeah, me too. Wanted to add something? Uh, just, just probably some small yeah, joke. I'm just wondering. If people in the uh, automotive industry eight years ago were discussing the same thing, what the size of the car should be and <laughs> how do you see the like? But actually the wheel is the same yeah. still, you know, the user interface of the car is still the yeah. same. Um, yeah, like last question. Mind, mind. Yeah, uh, just say I will repeat. Okay, uh, my question is close to our discussion. Uh, I want to ask, uh, I want to ask, yes. Uh, about styluses, what do you think about styluses? Because uh, Steve Jobs said the styluses are not uh, uh, needed. Uh, tap and slide interfaces will be everywhere. And uh, for some time it was uh, so, but uh, Microsoft released Windows 8 uh, developer preview with uh, Samsung Slate with stylus from Wacom. And uh, you use uh, Galaxy Note with stylus. What do you think about uh, handwriting interfaces and styluses at all? I have in my, uh, like, personal example, I have in my family a person who uses stylus for iPad. And um, I have an observation that stylus is used right now by the most creative people I know. This, I don't know how it will influence the thing, how you think about the thing, but this is my personal observation. Um, I just think, just one more time, that's all about user scenarios. Like for like painting, definitely it's stylus it just should be. For writing, I, I'm not sure because you know I truly believe that like uh, voice recognition and uh, let's say on-screen keyboard is uh, like well enough. Um, that's just uh, for for painting. I personally use the stylus on iPad. It's quite quite convenient. Andre, do you see people using stylus on Playbook? Uh, I, I can I can tell um, in in general styluses are good probably good for certain tasks like painting or drawing and there's no doubt about it. But for handwriting, I don't think it's that, that convenient. But of course, the the, the future will will show. And just. Um just a comment, uh, actually, uh, Samsung Galaxy Note is hu hu has a huge popularity in, uh, in China, just because uh, actually they can uh, draw the hieroglyphs uh, on a phone. And um, that's it. They, they just uh, trying to find a niche. I'm just talking about something, and uh, I'm not sure that it's like for like Europe, the styles would be popular. I personally don't use the styles on the Galaxy Note. 
Okay, uh, but voice recognition uh, is convenient to uh, uh, write a text, but uh, on a meeting you use uh, a white paper with uh, your pens to draw something, to explain something. What do you think about styluses in communication uh, between people? Uh, styluses role. Um, I, I'm, so if you're talking like about future, future prediction, Google and other big companies working on interfaces uh, with, uh, like, let's say, separating uh, input things with uh, displaying things, like for video glasses, for example. They have actually like team around about 30 people around, like, developing this kind of interface. And uh, Stylus probably is good for like next couple of years, but after that, it's not be trendy thing. Yeah, on the meetings people draw things, you're right, but they do many, many other tasks. I wouldn't say it's the, the only thing people do at the meetings. Some people don't, don't do anything. Hopefully. <laughs> Some people play play games. So, But for example, uh, at Mobile World Congress, we presented um, a concept of a future meeting with a, where, where you have a play box on the table and they feel each other with uh, Wi-Fi, with Bluetooth technology, and you can, they can basically easily exchange files in a very easy and secure way. And that's, I think, is more uh, kind of more realistic uh, way of what people do at meetings. For example, someone says, okay, let's look at this file, and he sends immediately to everyone this file, and people don't need to do anything for that. It's very easy. Like when you NFC, you just put one device next to each other and click. Um, thank you for your questions, and thank you, of course, for taking part in the discussion. Uh, when we have uh, coffee breaks, etc., just talk to them and ask them, because they're actually the most knowledgeable people here about hardware, and hardware is a big thing for you if you're device, um, if you software developers. Um, also, how you can start, I will give you a hint how you can start talking to them, um, is the question I didn't ask. The question is, what's the next big thing? What a question is, what was um, a big thing for you you saw at the Mobile World Congress? Um, except for the 41, uh, 41 um, camera, yeah? Um, thank you so much, and we'll move on. But please come and talk to them, and um, we're all actually open for discussion. All people who are here talking at the panels, they're here to talk to you in the first place. So thank you so much. Thank you very much.